All right. In the last video, we learned about Lewis structures. In this one, we're going to learn how to deal with uh, learn how to deal with Lewis structures for things that have charges. It's actually not really that tough. It pretty much only really affects the first step. Honestly, I'm just going to show you some examples and show you kind of how this works. So, if we had something like nitrate, okay. Really, the only part it affects the very beginning when you're adding up how many electrons there are, and it affects at the very end, there's one small little thing you have to do. But essentially, a nitrogen, in column 5a, so it has five valence electrons. Oxygen is in column 6a, so it has six valence electrons, times three. This negative charge means that there isn't, this, since it's negative, that means there is one extra electron floating around, so we're gonna add one. Okay, so basically it comes out to 24. And then we just follow the rules like normal until the very end there's one extra thing we need to do. Okay, so between nitrogen and oxygen, nitrogen is further away from fluorine, so it's our central atom. We have three oxygens attached. Okay, we have used six of our 24 electrons, we have 18 left. So we start putting them around the outer, the non-central atom, the terminal atoms first to make sure they've got their octet, so two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. We have now used two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. We have no electrons left, okay? So step three would have told us to put the, any remaining electrons in the middle. We don't, can't do that. Step four says to check for octets. This has an octet, this has an octet, this has an octet, this does not, okay. So the, I'm losing track of the numbers here. The next step is to form a double bond if we need to. This, ha this nitrogen has six electrons around it and it needs eight, so we're gonna have to steal one of these lone pairs. It doesn't really matter which one we pick because they're all equivalent, so I'm just gonna arbitrarily pick one. And essentially this lone pair is gonna be forced down to form a double bond. And now this has an octet, this nitrogen has an octet, this has an octet, and this has an octet. So everything's got its octet. And now we're gonna check the formal charges, okay? This is six minus one, two, three, four, five, six dots minus one line is negative one. This nitrogen is five minus zero dots minus one, two, three, four lines would be positive one. This is not super encouraging but it is what it is. This one's the exact same as that one, so six minus six minus one is negative one, and this one is six minus four minus two is zero. Okay, it's because it's number of valence electrons minus dots minus lines. So, technically this molecule is as good as it gets. It, it cannot be more stable than this, really. So the overall charge does add up to minus one. The, char the formal charges you apply do have to add up Unfortunately, we can't get rid of all of these charges. If we formed another double bond, that would get rid of two charges, but because nitrogen has an S and three P orbitals, which is a total of eight electrons, at, it's the only thing it has to work with, we really can't have more than eight electrons on there. So this is it, this is the structure. The one last thing that you need to do if something has a charge is you basically put brackets around it. It doesn't have to be in a different color, I just grabbed the wrong pen. Um, put brackets around it and indicate what the overall charge is. So that way, if somebody looks at this, they're not assuming that you just miscounted the electrons, okay? But otherwise, it's the same process, the same set of steps, everything's just about the same. Let's try another example. Um, let's try an easy one here. Try another one with a charge. So ammonium, one of the polyatomic ions that we've heard of, had to use before, okay? Nitrogen has five valence electrons. Hydrogen each has one times four. And this positive charge means we are missing an electron, so we actually subtract one. It sounds really counterintuitive that when this is negative, you add, and when this is positive, you subtract, but electrons are negative, and this is kind of the consequence of that. So 
five plus four would be nine, minus one. We only have eight electrons, and that's fine. Hydrogen cannot be a central atom, so it has to be nitrogen. And it's got four hydrogens attached. That's all eight of our electrons. That's literally the end. That's pretty much the only option we got. I'm gonna check the formal charges, but um, the hydrogen would be my one minus zero minus one is zero. So these are all zeros. And this nitrogen would be five minus zero minus four, just like it was up here. And we get positive one, which makes sense because it has to add up to plus one. And I guess I'll try to be consistent here some sort of bracket around it, and then you indicate what the overall charge is. So your formal charges that you apply to this have to add up to the overall charge. Um, one thing that I guess I didn't explicitly say in the last video with, about formal charges is that if you have a choice to make about where to put charges, the more electronegative atoms would like to be negative are more likely to tolerate being negative, and the electropositive ones are more likely to be positive. So on this, the oxygens are more electronegative and they have negative charges and the nitrogen's got a positive charge. Hydrogen is more electropositive, it's actually farther away, but it can't form charges. It, if, it, if it's got one bond, it's happy. But we have an electropositive atom, the central atom is the one that has the positive charge. So that makes sense. Okay. Um, let's try an example of one that has a charge, but also one that has more than one central atom. Okay. This is something called a condensed structure. We've actually seen this before, you just didn't know why I was writing it like that. This is acetic acid. You'll notice I'm kind of running through the polyatomic ions that you guys know. So, we still do this the same, but the way to interpret this is we have, this is a carbon, which is a central atom, connected to three hydrogens, connected to another carbon with an oxygen, and that carbon is connected to an oxygen, which would be our last central atom, okay? So, this carbon has four valence electrons. Each of those is one, so we have three of those. It's another carbon has four, six, six, and a, positive, or a negative charge means another one. So whatever that all adds up to. So four plus six is 10, four plus six is 10, plus another four, so 24 again, and that's okay. So what I meant by how these were attached is we visualize a central atom with stuff attached connected to a central atom with stuff attached connected to a central atom. So this is a carbon with three hydrogens attached connected to a carbon with an oxygen connected to an oxygen and that's what we got. Okay, so we have more than one central atom and that's okay. Honestly, this is literally the foundation of organic chemistry is that our carbon compounds like to form lots and lots and lots of chains of bonds. It's just kind of how they roll. Okay, so we need to, I guess, finish putting electrons on here. We have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. We have twelve electrons left. We start with the outer ones first. Hydrogen's happy with one bond, so we're going to give the oxygens some dots. Okay, so two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. And if you add everything up, we have hit 24, okay? If we check for octets, the hydrogens are happy, the oxygens are happy, this carbon has two, four, six, eight, but this carbon only has two, four, six. So we need to form a double bond. It doesn't actually matter which oxygen you pick because they're essentially equivalent. I'm gonna pick this one because I can, I guess, I don't know. I'm gonna rewrite all this. On quizzes or exams, if you're working in pencil, you can literally just erase that and draw the double bond. That's totally fine. I am trying to, for the sake of looking back at my notes, trying to indicate what choices were made and how I decided them. Okay, so now we're gonna check our formal charges because everything's got an octet at this point. The hydrogens, if they have one bond, we saw up here, it's gonna be zero. So the hydrogens, if you have one bond, that's the literal best situation they can be in. This carbon has four valence electrons minus zero dots, minus one, two, three, four bonds would be also zero. This carbon is four minus zero minus four is zero. This oxygen is six minus four minus two is zero. And this oxygen is six minus six minus one is negative one, which is fine because it has to add up to a negative one charge. Okay, so this thing gets a bracket 
its overall charge is negative one. Obviously, if you had a charge of like negative three, you would add three electrons. If you had a charge of like plus four, you would subtract four electrons, okay? But this is an example of one that has multiple central atoms, okay? So, all right, well, let's stop there. Thanks.